Hello everyone. I'm getting a bit unwell at the minute and I slept for a long time for the last two days. Like I went to bed at nine and woke up at eight two days in a row and I never normally do that. So I think I'm getting unwell so I'm doing a confirmation today. And I'm going to do a bigger video next week, which is going pretty well at the minute. I've just obviously had to delay it for today because of getting on well. But I just wanted to say thank you for all the kind comments. I really appreciate it. And something I thought of that I wanted to share is that, remember, don't put too much pressure on yourself for life to turn out exactly as you planned or make comparisons of yourself at different times. Because when you put too much time pressure on things and want them to go an exact way, they never ever work out that way. And if you put too much pressure on that, then it will start to make you feel down and anxious for no reason. Remember, everything works out in the end, even if it doesn't look the way you expect it to. And normally the best things in life happen totally randomly. And it normally turns out better in the long run. So just remember that. Because there's nothing worse than wanting something to happen by a set date, putting loads of pressure on yourself, then looking back and thinking, oh, it was like this before. But maybe it happened that way for a reason and there's better stuff for you ahead. So just remember that. Because if you take off them pressures on yourself, just follow what you know you need to be doing and let the rest happen. It will make life a lot easier. So I hope you're all doing great. Make sure you check out my Instagram at Joe the Insomniac and podcast in the description below. I love you all and enjoy this video. I guess I'll dive right into what happened and not bore you with the unimportant details. I was hiking on a trail I'm very familiar with and because of changes in the weather, I decided to leave the trail and cut through the woods. I wanted to try and get to my car before the downpour and I knew this area like the back of my hand. Before I knew it, I felt very strange and disorientated. Nothing appears familiar. I'm not sure if the woods seemed to be silent before or after I felt this way, but I become undeniably aware of how silent everything is. Oppressingly down, really suffocating silence, and my heart begins to pound as I sit in place and it felt as if the woods were spinning and closing in around me. I felt like I had nothing I could do, or anything that I could comprehend. It's when I start noticing something about 15 feet in front of me. Now, it was 10 feet higher and 8 feet wide, and a distortion. It was like something was bending the light and moving towards me like a fogged up mirror, Almost, but with no definitive shape, but it was moving with purpose and intelligence, and would be completely unnoticeable if not for the distortion. I turned to run and realised another was behind me, the same size and shape, almost about. Then, I realised there's at least four more of these moving around me. I'm trapped. What I was seeing in my brain could not make sense and I'm in utter shock and panic. I back up against a tree because I'm so scared. I curl up into a fetal position, pull my hands over my ears because they began ringing and it's a deafening sound. I close my eyes as these intelligent cloaked things moving around me. I saw a white flash like what happens if you've ever hit something very hard or been punched well. My ears were ringing, and I see flashes, then nothing. I woke up to the rain falling on me. Hours have passed. Everything was normal, and I knew where I was. I gathered myself, check for injuries, and realize I'm completely fine, and drive home. I can't make sense of what happened. I've googled similar events, but not found anything like what happened to me. I stumbled across stealth cloaking technologies used by the military, and the technology is primitive compared to what I saw. And there was, I don't know, something very organic about what I saw. Now, I don't know if anyone's experienced something similar to me, but I need answers. Update. It's really hard to answer everyone individually, but 
I'm definitely going to be seeing the doctor tomorrow, but I have no history of seizures or other health issues. I'm in my 20s and fairly fit and sound of mind, but I want to make sure. Now the headaches and blurry vision have only been an issue since the incident. I've never had migraines before, and these things had no definitive shape to them. And they were very large, and moving with purpose and intelligence. Now I could smell something which I thought was my brain frying from how loud the sound was and how intense the situation was. Now I crouched down with my head in my hands, kneeling in the fetal position out of fear and panic before I blacked out. When I closed my eyes, I can see the less than 5 feet away from me. I can smell a sulfuric metal type smell. Then the flash occurred that was blinding and I woke up afterwards. I was considerably dry even though it was drizzling when this occurred. And when I woke up, I realised 4 hours had passed and it was raining heavy but I was pretty much dry and I can't explain it but there was some sound during all of this. I won't lie. I'm shook up and freaked out. I'm trying to make a rational assumption out of what happened, but I really can't. I was coming home late from work one day. I worked as a forest ranger, so that means my hours could go pretty late sometimes. I had a pretty good day at work. Everything was normal. I got in and went to sleep. Now just because I wasn't at work didn't mean I wasn't an outdoorsy person. So the next day, I decided to go for a hike in a forest not too far away from where I live. I really like getting out into the middle of nowhere because I find I can really free my mind this way and just think with a clear head. Now eventually I arrive at the forest. It's very peaceful now. I can hear all kinds of animals around. I put in my headphones and listen to some music and start my walk. As I'm walking, I start to get caught up on something that annoyed me and I'm trying to find ways to think out of the situation. This goes on for a while and I realise that I'm in a part of the woods I've never been in before. I'm kind of confused because as I look around, I see some mist and fog. I know that I must be near water because the mist is here, but I've never seen it before. As I'm doing so, I can see a dead tree just off in the distance. I don't know what it is about this, but I keep getting a really weird vibe. I look to the left and I can see a person standing up. I can only see the top of them. They must be wearing some strange camouflage or a Halloween suit because it looks like a skeleton staring at me. I think this is weird and I decide to take off my headphones so I can be more in the situation in case anything goes bad. As I do so, I hear the sounds of bones crashing on the floor, almost like somebody's dropped a load of sticks onto concrete. Then it hits me. It's now completely silent where I am. And I look around and it's almost like I've gone to a complete different place. It doesn't look anything like the woods I was in before. I look up and I call out to the person thinking it's a hunter. They're not meant to be hunting here and I really don't want to get shot today. They can't hear me or they don't reply so I decide to walk over slowly. I turn on my flashlight on my phone so they can see me come in. Again, I really don't want them to mistake me for an animal. But I have an orange coat on so there shouldn't be a problem with that. I start explaining that I'm an off-duty park ranger and there's no problems here. Just to let them know that I'm here. It's something I don't realise till afterwards but it was completely silent in this moment and the fog seems to be picking up. It was crazy thinking of it now. It was almost like I entered a movie scene of a strange limbo land where there's no heaven or earth or anything. You're just kind of in a barren wasteland. It's really creepy. I walk up towards where I last saw the person and I realise that they're long gone. 
but they've left something behind. I think it's a backpack, but I can't tell next to the sticks. As I approach, I get a horrible smell of sulfur. It's almost like a metallic smell, it's very hard to describe. I then see something on the ground that appears to be a large white rock followed by other sticks. I'm very confused on exactly what this is. I turn it over using only my foot, and my heart drops. These are human remains. Not a fresh body by any chance. It looks like ancient bones, just sitting in a pile. My palms begin to sweat and it hits me that I saw this thing standing just a few seconds earlier before I looked down at my phone. In a heartbeat, I turn round and start sprinting in the opposite direction. The smell of sulfur still seems to be following me. I keep on sprinting through the woods and I don't even bother looking back. Through the grace of God I find a path that I knew which I never really travelled along, and I keep on running for what felt like hours. I continue on this path and I glance back for a second and catch my breath. The craziest thing is I can't see any fog now, and the sound has all returned. Within less than a minute I'm already sprinting back to my car, weeping as I'm driving back home. I haven't told this story to anyone, and I've never went back there again since. I have no idea what kind of limbo land I entered, or what that thing was. I just know that I never want to encounter it again. I'm staying in the Pigeon Forge, near the Smoky Mountains right now in a cabin in the woods. There's other cabins nearby though. I was deep asleep last night and my boyfriend was still outside in the hot tub and he come inside yelling for me to wake up. He said that he started hearing something big moving around the forest. He thinks it's a bear, but he shines his flashlight and it was like something small moving through the grass that he couldn't see clearly. There were multiple of them but they were covered by grass and moving in different directions. He only saw one, but it was a little ways in the distance, and he described it as long and tan coloured skin, slithering around, very fast but gracefully. They're clear as day, and he heard a woman scream saying help me someone, but there's no one around, and it's the weirdest thing he'd sound like it's not a real person like it's rehearsed or a recording. He couldn't tell where it was coming from. I have no idea what he saw. So for a bit of context, I live in northwestern Georgia, US. I'm in the middle of nowhere, on a weird off on its own clue de sac with houses only on one side and the woods around it. Other than the clue de sac, houses are over a hundred yards away from each other. The woods are thick, beginning about 30 foot away from our house. The area is not known to have any bears, no wolves or kai wolves, and our coyotes are really small and shy, like the deer. I even contacted our local DFW and they said there's never been anything bigger than a coyote or wolf out here. I take the dogs out in the yard to pee about 2-3 to three times after dark. I put them on a split leash and normally wander around the yard for a bit to let them find a spot, but that's come to an end and I don't dare step off the patio now. For the past few weeks, my dogs have been acting really odd when it comes to going out at night. They want to go out front, but since my landlord doesn't want me to let them ruin the front lawn. I have to drag them to the back door, and they refuse to step out most times, especially my younger dog. They want to stay close to the house and are always very alert. They will lunge towards the woods at random starting to bark like crazy. I would normally call this off as just wildlife, but it's been getting really weird. 
and normally. If there is something like a rabbit, they're very easily shushed and redirected. I've heard whatever it is walking right on the edge of the woods. It doesn't have the typical four beat walk of a four legged animal, and it's not scared of my dogs. I can hear its heavy breathing and the leaves crunch as it moves. It's not scared of dogs at all or me shouting, and it doesn't have to leave. It's always there by 9 pm. It'll be there at midnight, then it'll be there at 2 am, always at the very edge of the woods, and I can feel a difference myself. Even when I go out alone, I had to grab a patio chair the other day for example, it's almost like I can feel when it's there. I'm normally very relaxed in my yard, even at night, but, but I'll get that back shuddering feeling that I have to get out of there. Now, my dogs go crazy when inside, seemingly at random, standing at the windows barking out to the woods. I've been out there during the day, looking for things like fur scraps, stag or claw marks, but nothing ever turns up. Not even footprints. I've been trying to really find what this can be, but I always end up going in circles with this. As an immigrant, I'm not knowledgeable on local stuff like folklore, but I know this scares the holy hell out of me, so I'm wondering if anyone has an idea of what this could be. To lay the scene, I'm from a small town in Florida, very close to the coast. It's a commuter town, and it's usually pretty quiet at night, but since the state shut down, people haven't been so eager to get home and go to bed so they can get to work in the morning. But I work in the service, and still work just as much as though nothing had happened. I see a lot more people out at night having parties or driving around at weird hours. So one night, my dad picked me up from a closing shift. We decided to take the back roads to get back, because it's faster. It's still fairly inhabited, with houses and a church and a high school on the way, but it's poorly lit. It was an uneventful ride. We're just going like normal talking, catching up on the last hour or two of my day. Until we made it to the final turn onto a stretch of road besides the church. In the middle of the road was a creature, and physically, it's very large. It was covered in thick black fur, and for reference on the size, my dad drives a 2005 Dodge Ram. The headlights just reach its shoulders and it has skinny legs. It's hunched over and dragging one of them behind. And they curve outwards, which made me wonder if they're supposed to, or if it was severely bowed. I can't think logically of any animal it could have been, unless it was massively mutated or deformed, but it doesn't make sense. When our headlights hit it, it sunk to the ground, screamed and ran into the woods. The screams were high pitched and wet, like it was gargling. I saw it stumble off the road and hit a tree before screaming again and disappearing. My dad stops the truck and gets out with a flashlight. We only stayed for a few minutes as we were both pretty shaken. We looked for blood or tracks where there aren't any, but what I remembered is still how weird it was seeing the side of the road and the truck covered in white sand, even though we're not close to the beach. We got back in our truck and went home, and my dad refuses to talk about what we saw that day. I have no idea what I saw. Before I share my mum's experience, I feel like a little background into my family's history will be important. We're from a small town in Arizona. I was born there, but I lived in the city since I was five years old. My parents were born and raised there, as were their parents. The town has a slew of paranormal activity, maybe having something to do with it being an old outpost of some port for Spanish soldiers during the war. I don't honestly know which one. It was several hundreds of years ago. There are rumours of witchcraft, and many witches live in there even to this day. 
It has a cemetery on a hill that is so old, it's been condemned. You can literally fall through the ground and through an old coffin if you venture there, and the graves are so old that the remains are piles of rocks. There are no makers of any kind except for a few splintered across rotten wooded crosses. The house that my great grandparents lived on was built sometime in between the mid 1800s. My mum grew up in the house next door. Many relics from the war have been discovered in this town, and when my mum was a preteen, she says her neighbours, who are extremely poor, discovered a chest of Spanish coins, both gold and silver while digging a new septic tank. They become very wealthy overnight and moved away, but according to my mum, the family's still very well off. My family has somewhat of a dark history on my mum's side. After her grandparents both died, her mum was cleaning out their house when they discovered two voodoo type dolls that they believed were responsible for her parents' deaths. That however is a story for another day. I'm just going to try and give you a bit of background info, and that was it. So. My mum's always been ultra sensitive, her intuition is almost always spot on. She has spent her life hearing and seeing apparitions and spirits, even from a young age. She also dreams about all sorts. Some of them about people who have already died, some predicting death, other significant events in her life. She passed some of these traits on to me, and she says I am also sensitive based on my dreams and experiences. but. That's another story for another day. She has told me several times of a dream that she had while spending the night at her grandparents' home. Now I'm retelling this by memory. She said that there was something significant about that day or night that she can remember. She was about 13 years old at the time. She went to bed around 9 which was normal after helping clean up the kitchen after dinner. When she stayed there, she said she always slept in the guest bedroom and since all her aunts moved away and had their own families, she's there all alone. The dream started as if she had just woken up in a strange place. She said that immediately, a pungent musty smell hit her nostrils and it was so dark that she could hardly see her own hand in front of her. When she lifted her hand to look at it, she noticed the sounds of a chain rattling and felt something cold and heavy on her wrists. After feeling them, she realises these are thick shackles, and they're attached to the wall behind her, so her movement's limited. She said she started to feel the rest of her body, and said she didn't like it and didn't feel as though she was herself. She's extremely thin, can see her ribs sticking out, and she wasn't clothed. Her hair was cut very short and uneven from what she could feel. Her face felt very thin too. Her cheekbones were sticking out. She noticed that she could faintly hear the sound of a man's voice and the sounds of horses, but it was far from where she was. It smelt dank and faintly like horses' manure. The floor was dirty. The floor felt hard like clay or concrete, and she started telling herself that it's just a dream. But she couldn't escape how real it felt. The smell, the sounds, the weight of the shackles and chains. About that time she started to hear some of the other chains rattling close by, as if there were others chained up around her. She could actually hear them cry and whimper, but not really understand words. At that point, a feeling of complete terror hit her, like she knew she could never escape or be rescued and would die there. She starts to look around and said she couldn't see anything besides her in front of her, but when she looked up, she could see there's a small window or opening, about 2 feet by 2 feet, and it had 4 or 5 vertical bars on it. It must have been about 50 feet up from the floor, so there was no way she could reach it or look out of it. She realised that there were voices and the sounds of horses coming. She starts to panic and pulls at the chains, tugging at the shackles but to no avail. Neither would budge. She was trapped there with no way out. At this point she told herself that she had to be dreaming and tried everything she could to wake herself up. She bit her hands and pinched herself, even slapping herself and nothing could wake her up. After what felt like hours, she sort of just 
bowed her head off and laid down crying to sleep. When she woke up, it's the next morning and the sun's shining. She woke up in bed, the same one she fell asleep in, at her grandparents' home. When she opened her eyes, her cheeks and pillow were wet with tears, her heart was pounding out of her chest. She said that she still felt that horrible panic for several minutes after. She immediately got up and went to her grandparents' room. Now it's early but they're already awake. She proceeded to tell them everything about the dream in detail. Her grandpa whom she is very close to hugged her to comfort her, reassuring her that she had a nightmare and everything's okay, and she just had a vivid imagination. She went home later and told her mum. She told her the same thing, it's her imagination. It took a few days to get over it, but she eventually forgets about the dream, and didn't even think about it until years later. As I mentioned before, my great grandparents house that they lived in and died in was really old. Growing up in it, it always needed some kind of repairs. The roof and the walls are always being worked on. My mum said she is pregnant with me when she's about 23, when the floor needed to be redone and it's no easy job. The entire floor needed to be torn out. Now around this time, both of my grandparents have passed away. Her parents lived in the home. My uncle and a couple of cousins were skilled carpenters and they decided to do the job. My grandparents and my two uncles had moved out for about a week in order to get on with the repairs. This is the part that freaks me out to this day though. My grandma said the floor had never been redone up to this point, so she doesn't know when the original floor was made. What they did find, however, has remained a family secret for 40 years, but to this day nobody speaks of it. When the floor was completely torn out, my uncle expected to find dirt underneath. Instead, it looks like a boarded up cellar. It was empty, but there is nothing in the opening in the corner that resembled a shaft of sorts. The cellar floor was made of some type of old wood that's rotted, so they decided to tear it up as well. There wasn't dirt under the floor either, but another room. Apparently there's four floors underneath in total. All of them are pretty empty, besides some old saddles and horses shoes. And some old wine bottles, that sort of thing. But. On the very last level, deep underground, there was a room with a dirt floor, with shackles on the walls and some skeletons bound. There are actual bodies underneath the house. According to my mum, my uncles and cousins get really spooked, realising what they've covered up. They don't want to disturb the bodies, so they build a new floor and don't even speak about it. When word reached my mum of what had been found, she immediately thinks of her dream. She knew what she experienced and that it must be linked to that. As for the house, it's still there. It is actually occupied by my grandma, well at least up until she passed, back in 2014. The property still belongs to the family, but the house has been condemned as the roof caved in a couple of years ago. All I know is that if ever who inherits a house tears it down, they're going to be in for a really big surprise. My wife posted snippets of this story, but I'll explain it all. I lived in a small KY town throughout the middle of high school. That's as specific as I'll go. In this town, there was a large cemetery with a house on its land. And of course, my large family decided this is a perfect place. For reference, imagine a perfectly rectangled area the entire right to fur to graves, maybe even more after that. The left third is condemned into a garage, with graves behind it and to the sides of it. In front of this garage is my house, an old house that has been around for decades in terrible shape. It was cheap, right away it's an unsettling home, with an added on patio surrounded by windows that never felt empty day or night. This room had steps on the right that led to the basement, and the door in the front led to the main house. The entire house was freaky, and everyone often felt watched or followed. This actually happened all the time. Now to the basement, 
aka my living area. It was largely unfinished, just concrete all throughout. One third of it are actually under the stairs, and there's a laundry slash shower room. This was just a slab of concrete and a spray head, so let's just say it's horrid. There was a large main room where the patio steps connect to, allowing two entries and exits into the basement. It's important to know that in three years, the patio basement door was only used several times, usually by me sneaking out or something. There's only two small rooms with no doors connected to the main room, used for storage originally but turned into mine and my brother's rooms, even though he only stored things there and usually slept upstairs. Now being a small child at the time, I didn't really think too much of this. The rooms are connected by a joint closet. My room was initially closed to the patio door on the far side of the room from the house stairs. I would spend the first half of the year in that room. This is the beginning of the terror I would experience. In this room, I used an old mint green bedsheet as a curtain, and it only took my first night to fully understand this place isn't normal. I would hear objects moving in the main room. The light from the shed that poured in from the ground level slit of a window would randomly be blocked with shadows. Whenever I left my room at night, I ran as hard as I can to get upstairs, dashing as fast as I can up the old wooden stairs, making as much noise as possible just to not hear it all behind me. I always felt watched, especially in the main room from my closet. I was about 15 at the time, so not an 8 year old who's afraid of the dark, but I could feel eyes drilling into me, the malevolence of this main room as I tore through the darkness to get upstairs. I slowly turned to sleep in less and less, waking up before my parents, pretending I dozed off on the couch to explain why I'm afraid of the basement. I never told them why until last year. Now as terrifying and as unsettling as it is, my room felt, well, fine. Aside from the closet that connects to the other room, a closet I never opened unless I had to. It was fine. I wasn't disturbed in the room, and just left lights on whenever I could. However, after the first year, toxic mold pushed me from my room to what was originally my little brother's room, aka the place he left for a few things. It was here that the spookiness escalated to images and voices that haunted me for years later, still making me scream and wake up begging for help. My wife, who was dating me at the time I lived there, has said it's become normal to her to reach over and comfort me during this. Right away in the new room, things changed. No longer was I isolated in the corner of the basement. I'm dead center. The same curtain hung over the door frame, but the basement window light went right through it. I could see them, people of all types walking through my basement, Conversing silhouettes burned into my mind like a man in a large hat and suit, speaking to someone about the boy in there, always moving past my door. They knew I was there, they knew who I was, but they weren't my family or friends. I would on occasion try and get the strength to turn my light on and see what it was, to find no one, not a single person. I'd run upstairs and find everyone asleep. Tears rolled down my face as my body was shocked. I would stay upstairs until my folks woke up. It was here that the nightmares began, which would lead to sleep paralysis at times, terrifying enough on its own, but not inherently paranormal. The comfort I had was leaving Dragon Ball Z seasons DVDs playing all night, 8 hours straight, never letting the room get dark. The spirits and shadows walking past my room become common, but not quite nightly. I was afraid but felt no danger. They left my room undisturbed while I was in it, seemingly respectfully to me. That's until it came. I awoke one night surrounded by darkness. The light from outside is dim. My eyes opened immediately as everything felt wrong. Then I saw it, a black mass leaning over me. Now this is small, I mean, 
no larger than me at least. It's the purest black I've ever seen. It was the shadow amongst shadows, darker than the night sky without stars. It was looking down at me almost playfully, but I could feel its hatred and anger. I closed my eyes making certain that it wasn't just in my head or a dream. Now, my heart stopped for a moment. I can still see its eye, all these years later piercing me. I had to make it leave. Nothing had violated my space before. I closed my eyes as tight as possible and jumped through it, slam on my light without skipping a beat, turning on the TV that I had, slamming on Dragon Ball Z as quick as I possibly can. My body shaking as I curled into a ball and just cried in the main room for several hours before the sun come up. This was the only time this creature made its presence known to me, but it still haunts me. I can feel that cold envelop me from time to time downstairs. The entire house was haunted. Objects would fall on their own and you'd hear footsteps constantly, but the base was my hell. Later last year, I told my siblings and parents what happened and asked if they felt something similar. Their stories weren't as graphic or as terrifying as mine, but they all experienced things in the basement. It's why my brother never slept there. My little sister wouldn't even go down there at all. Two years later, the house was condemned, and I visited the now filled foundation where my room was. It was then that I really understood how I spent years sleeping on the same level, the exact same level as the bodies, surrounded on all sides, that I could feel this creature leaving the ground. It was terrifying me. I was glad it just wasn't watching me anymore. My wife was convinced for years that it attached itself to me, but that's for another day. I'm just glad it's gone now. For most of my childhood, I believed ghosts were real. The reason I believed was because of the nightmares I had when I was younger. Nightmares that prevented me from going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, forcing me to sleep with a light on constantly, preventing me from looking down dark hallways and rooms on the way to bed. Droopy told, I didn't experience anything tangible to back my beliefs for a long time, yet I still believed the place was haunted. Fast forward to the age of 13, I moved to a new city into a much newer house. Nothing happened for several years and my fears waned. I slept comfortable for years in one of the rooms upstairs. Life events happened, I was forced to switch rooms several times. I moved to another room upstairs across the hall and back again to my original room. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing could have prepared me for the next move, to the middle of the wide open basement. It started in high school at about 10th grade. I slept underneath a window, seating area, TV, bathroom, and other bedroom were across to my left. A storage space was at the foot of my bed, two giant bookcases with a curtain between them, with a fridge and family heirlooms behind them. Now one early morning, I had my first experience. Now at 6am, my alarm was set to kill a queen. I was awoken to the song. When I sat up to my best friend, who is dressed as Freddie Mercury at Live Aid, standing at the foot of my bedroom door singing, only for a brief moment, I blinked and he's gone. The alarm went off. I laugh about it. Nothing too strange for several weeks occurred after. Another night, I was awoken to a chill. I opened my eyes to the dark basement. My eyes panned to the left, and I see a tall, black, shadowy figure quietly floating across the room, passing about five feet away from me parallel to the bedside before disappearing behind the bookcase. It was hauntingly peaceful and quiet. It didn't appear to notice me, but the image was so vivid. It didn't actually scare me, and I slept peacefully after. But whatever was trying to communicate with me saved its most disturbing and sinister for last. Several months later, my room orientation changed. 
I now slept where the seating area was facing the window I slept underneath. The black shadow now wouldn't move from left to right, instead right to left. It was December and I wasn't feeling great and I go to bed at 8. I was in a state of sleep that you're just about aware of what's going on but you kind of feel asleep, like an in-between. Something tells me to sit up. I turned over and sat up and I see a moonlight white, decomposing face with hollowed out eyes about 12 inches away from me, its face contorting, rotting and disfigured. It was in a crawling position staring at me, my eyes dart left and three more sat to the couch to the left of me, one with its legs crossed, all facing me disfigured. This only lasted for a few seconds. I closed my eyes a few times and they were gone. I curled up into the corner against the wall, panicked, fumbled for the TV remote in the dark and turned that on for some light and I don't sleep for three days. When I went back, I never slept comfortably and I never saw anything like it since. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me in my life was a week ago and caused me to move out of the house I was renting. Now this house I was renting was ancient, it must have been at least a hundred years old. It had a creepy basement that I never went into, well never unless I had to. I stayed there happily with my wife but she was away for work during this time. Now a week ago, everything's going well and I'm peacefully asleep in my bedroom when I hear somebody calling out my voice from the basement. It's my wife's voice. I'm very confused but think she's come back and is in some kind of danger in my confusion. So I get up quickly to head down there. I have my flashlight, and I'm not kidding. The moment I put my flashlight there, I can't even see the bottom of the stairs. This doesn't make sense because I have my torch on, but it's almost like I've hit a wall of blackness. My flashlight flickers off and I hear the most blood curdling scream I've ever heard in my life. I drop the torch and immediately bolt it out of there. I quickly pack up some vital necessities, jump into my car, then drive for three hours to get to my parents' house. I never went back to that place again. Later in that same day, I get a phone call off of my neighbour asking if I was okay because she heard a blood curdling scream coming from my house and could see a figure at the very top in the attic. This occurred to my brother. My house was built in 1904. It's a single family home, wooden frame sitting on a concrete block foundation. I've been living there for about 18 years. Of all the weird things that my siblings and me have seen or heard is all down to this one event and is very vivid. About 15 years ago, my brother and his best friends had started a garage band playing mostly Spanish rock alternative music but in a Spanish language. His friends could only get together on Sunday afternoons. They would practice in the evening and they would usually call it quits by about 8pm. This was the time I usually showed up and went to bed because I worked the graveyard shift. I usually only slept for a few hours before heading to work. This event happened in late fall so the days were getting shorter. They had just finished a long session when deciding to head to someone else's house came about. My brother headed to his car keys and gives them to his buddy so they can load up all their equipment. Everyone filed out of the basement. The tricky part was that they needed to walk all the way back to the basement, up the back stairs, through the kitchen, down the hall, into the living room and out into the front where there's a porch. Everyone's outside sitting in my brother's truck waiting for him. My brother was walking up the stairs when he remembered that he left food in a container sitting on a speaker in the basement. He made the decision to go back. Now the basement is not clean. Now the basement itself is full of sight lines. There have been practitions made. 
The boiler and the main heating unit are right smack bang in the middle. So after my brother walks back, he's about to retrieve his food container when out of the corner of his eye, he sees it. A shadowy figure right at his peripheral vision. The feeling of dread and uneasiness washes over my brother. We had been taught that if you're in the presence of a spirit or a ghost or you get a bad vibe, to very quickly pray or cuss at it. My brother chose the latter and basically swore at it. My brother turns around not glancing in the dark corner. He starts to walk back towards the basement and briskly up the stairs closing doors and turning off lights as he was walking out. The last light switch is on the opposite side of the front door. Now luckily the door was open and the light from the street lamp was flooding in the living room with its amber glow. My brother said he felt something at his back just as he walked out the house. But at no point did he want to turn around as he flickered the last switch in the living room and it goes dark. As he stepped out, he pulled onto the door, closing it behind him. He's still holding his canned food container in one hand. He jogged down the few porch steps, walks towards the front gate. Our house resides from far from the main street, essentially having a large front yard but no back garden. As he gets close to the gap between himself and his friend, he kind of smiled as he thought everything was over, and he's annoyed that He's scared of nothing, thinking it's in his head. He then climbed into the driver's side of the truck, putting on his seatbelts and getting ready to pull out of the parking spot directly in front of the house when one of his friends says, Hey, wait, what about your brother? Isn't he coming in with us? My brother answers, What do you mean? He went to work earlier in the night. He's already gone. Do you not see his car? They all stared at him with disbelief, saying, Then who is walking behind you then? Hello everyone, hope you're all doing great. Thank you again for all the kind comments on my last video and on my Instagram. I wanted to say, um, remember if you struggle with mental health problems, make sure that you have a good structure in your life. It doesn't sound like much, but it's extremely important for me to stay good and to get everything done and not worry as much. It hasn't got to be the most overstructured thing in the world or too complicated, but just make sure that you have some kind of routine, like it'll really do a lot of good for your head, honestly. The worst I get is when I don't have goals or structure, but having them simple things can make the world's difference, so just remember that. I hope you enjoy these stories, I love you and I'll talk to you all soon. And make sure you check out the podcast below and my Instagram, which is at Joe the Insomniac. So I live in a somewhat medium-sized town with a mix of cities and backwards areas. A bus stop I usually use is a good mix. It has buildings close by, while also having entry says into the nearby surrounding buildings. One morning, I was waiting in the middle of nowhere for the bus. I realise how late it is in the morning. I get annoyed and decide since I was bored, I would go into this little walkway slash trowel that's nearby. Not all the way, just enough to where I could be secluded by the trees. After a while of checking my phone, I hear the bus stopping a little way from me. I head back to see if it's there, and I get a fight or flight response that was very intense. It's like a gunshot. I turn around to see this crouching creature coming out of the secluded area that I was in. It was pitch black. Its arms were about the size of its body. Its head looked like it was an eraser that's used. The most terrifying part of the creature is its size. It's easily the size of a telephone pole. It towered over me and everything around it. Its hands were large and its fingers were thick and were about half the size of my arm. I don't know if I should run because I know this thing could catch me easily. Some time passed while it climbed out of the walkway and just stood looking at me. Then the bus pulled up, opens its doors. I look at the bus and back to the creature but 
I can't see it now. I look at the bus driver and his face is normal, so I assume that he hasn't seen it. I got on the bus and cry silently for a good five minutes. I don't know if this correlated or if it's just my brain, but that night, I had a dream of the exact same thing that happened to me. Except the bus doesn't show up and my limbs get ripped off. My friends don't believe me about it. I don't know whether I saw a skimwalker or what, but I hate the fact that the bus driver didn't see it too. I have no idea what it was to this day, and I still get very scared if I go back to that bus stop or I'm near the forest line where this thing come from. I was camping in the middle of nowhere in Washington near Mount Rainer. Like, not an official campground, just way out in the forest where I wouldn't have expected another human for miles. One night, I wake up and hear something. I open my tent, and there's a guy sitting by where I am with my fire, and right beside the tent. Nothing in particular is noteworthy about the situation now or the guy, it's just a regular guy sitting outside where I am a couple of feet away from my tent but he's got no pack or anything with him, just a guy there. He saw me open the tent, his eyes got huge like he just saw a ghost, and he took off. It shook me up pretty badly, but over the next day, I managed to put it out of my mind fairly well after writing it off as just some odd occurrence, and somebody probably off his head or something, and maybe it's a coincidence he's near me and he got lost going back to his campsite. Then, two days after that, and 10 to 15 miles away in totally random directions that nobody could take the same path as on accident, I was sitting by the fire that night and started hearing noises that got more and more convincing that a person's there. Uh, I go out to them, and out of the darkness someone was like, Do you know how to get the bell crown? I said no. I didn't even think it was a real thing. They kept talking just out of my line of vision. I tried to see them with my flashlight, but they yelled, aim that away, and that kind of spooks me. After like 15 minutes of being very freaked out, and them talking and asking completely random questions from the darkness, it sounded like the voice had gotten closer, so I shined my light again and it was the same dude who'd been outside the night before. He had to have followed me for almost 15 miles in two days this means. It's not an accident. No way, it's impossible. And as soon as my light hits him, he takes off again. I start to chase him but didn't want to get lost in the wilderness in the darkness, so stopped quickly after probably 100 or 200 feet. This one couldn't be written off now because the only way he could have been in both places is specifically if he was following. I decided the trip was very, very unsettling and hiked back over the next three days, constantly doubling back, trying to throw off anybody from following me. I occasionally hide and see if anyone's there. I really can't describe how terrifying it was to feel like I'm being hunted through the woods and to actually have to brainstorm on things I could do best to avoid potentially being murdered on. On the first night of hiking out, twice I heard what sounded like a person walking circles outside my tent, but by the time I mustered the courage to look, no one's there. On the second night, I heard what I thought was an animal making noises in the distance, but slowly decided that it sounds more human. It could have been somebody pretending to be an animal though, but it really sounded like a person making howling noises. I almost cried when I finally got back to the car because the feeling of relief was so strong. To this day, I have literally no idea who this person is or why they were following me, and I don't understand how they were surviving fine without any backpack or tents. That's what scares me the most. They must have been out there for a while. I hate to think what would have happened if I fell asleep with them around. I 
I live in a small town in Kentucky, and I've lived there for my entire life. And because of that, I've been surrounded by the mountains and woods for years. My house is currently nestled into the woods in the middle of nowhere, and thus, outdoor activities has taken up a massive chunk of my life, especially in the summer and fall. I'm in the woods almost daily, hiking to the creeks to fish or meadows to hunt. I know the woods and trails around my home like the back of my hand. That said, there is definitely something that calls to you while you're out in the woods, especially when you're alone, and I've just realised now that, after stumbling upon these subs, that is something I probably shouldn't have brushed off, but it's hard to ignore. My parents began allowing me to hike alone when I was around 13, but I didn't get really into it until about two years later when I'm 15. Even then though, I wasn't allowed to go far, and always had a walkie-talkie. Later at 17, I'm allowed to have a handgun with me, but that's neither here nor there. There's stories I can tell at that age too, but this one happened when I was 15. Before I get into it, I should mention that I have two dogs outside, Max a black lab and Bo a beagle. I've had both since I was young, and they're smart, always staying by my side when I'm in the woods. They always listen to me, until this day. I'm hiking a trail that runs up beyond my aunt's house, one that I'd hike in and out of during the day. Now I just get out to enjoy the woods there really. It was in October so the weather was cool and hot, and I had been hiking for about an hour. The trail comes out on a spring that runs down from the top of this particular mountain. It hadn't rained that day, so the spring was mostly dry and covered in leaves. I remember looking up the mountains, which I'd never liked to hike to the top of before, but I had this strange call. It wasn't really a voice, but an urge that I can't ignore. Keep in mind that I'm a very timid person, and hiking unfamiliar trails on my own freaks me out to this day. But that day, all my fear had dissipated. I begin hiking higher and higher. My dogs are following. I don't even know how to describe the feeling that came over me, but I just remembered staring down at my feet and feeling at peace as I climbed. There's a moment when I stop to look out at the houses below. I'd never been so high up. Remember, I felt amazed. I took a picture on my phone, and then I look around me for my dogs. Both had already run off and Max was following. I called out to them frantically to stop, but they don't listen. They disappear. At this point, looking down at the mountainside, I'm very afraid. Then I look back uphill, and it came over me again. I keep hiking. I can't stop. Eventually, I heard my walkie-talkie crackle. Everything was distorted, and I couldn't make out any words. I assume now I was just out of range to pick it up. But, back then, it freaks me out. Whatever come over me had now stopped. My dogs were still gone. Panicked, I began running downhill. It's a wonder I don't get hurt, as I near the wide section of the spring near the bottom. My walkie-talkie picks back up, and I heard my dogs running downhill behind me. I gone home, and mostly forgotten about it. I just told myself that I'd been lost and to be more careful. Now fast forward many years to now, I still hike. I commented the short version of this before, but saying I'd add more, and there is more. So last year, I hike up to a cave behind my house, this is something that I've done a million times before, and then I started following a trail that I'd never fully explored, just out of curiosity. Bo was ahead of me as per usual, but when I call back to her, she comes. We hike for the better part of 45 minutes, following a pretty simple trail, and then I figured out I'd better be heading back because it'd be getting dark soon. And yet, I couldn't stop. I kept telling myself I'd go for a little bit further, and a bit more. I remembered looking down at my feet, just like before, 
and listening to the silence of the woods around me and feeling at peace. It felt so easy just to go deeper and so difficult to turn around. Both felt the call too, because even after that, I did break out of it and turn around. And then called her back and she wouldn't stop. I had to catch up with her and physically turn her around and pet her before she'd come with me. Now these stories really worried me. What if I didn't stumble? What if my mum hadn't decided to contact me at that moment? How deep would I have hiked and what would have waited for me in the depths? I don't know what's out there but I do know this, the woods definitely called me. I grew up in Ohio in the 70s and me and my childhood friend Joe were outside all the time we could manage it. Joe lived on a farm that bordered a pretty big forest and my parents would drop me off in the morning and we'd stay in the woods all weekend. We'd only come out for school. We loved to pretend that we were frontiermen. We built shelters, traps, practiced making fire with sticks a whole nine yards. When we got to be in high school, we got this notion to pull a stand by me. This was actually based on the movie of the same name that had just come out. The idea was that we'd walk the railroad tracks out in the country, but instead of looking for a dead body, we'd find cool bridges to fish from and camp a little way off the track. Of course we knew this was dangerous and we'd likely be trespassing but we kids. We had a lot of fun. We'd find beautiful rivers. We discovered bridges that nobody went on. We fished, hid from trains. At night we camped in the woods just near the tracks and made small hidden fires. Nothing bad ever happened. I loved doing this. It was so fun we'd do it multiple times and never had a problem. After high school, me and Joe went on our own ways. We both left home but always stayed in touch and always tried to coordinate visits so we'd see each other occasionally. But one summer in the mid 90s, it worked out that we were both in town for about a week. We'd do stuff with family in the day and at night, we'd either catch drinks at the bar or sit outside Joe's house around a fire and talk about the old days. One night, me and Joe were talking about our Stand By Me trips. Well, nostalgia and beer are a hell of a mix, so we decided to take a day, walk the rails, camp one night and walk home. The day came, we started out early morning. We had my wife drop us off in our old spot where we used to start, right outside of our hometown. She thought this was absolutely crazy and made sure to mention that to us. When she pulled away, Joe suggested that instead of walking the usual route, we'd go the opposite way, just to be adventurous. We knew the land well, we had a map, so I gave a what the hell and we set off. The day went fine. It was fun and a little sad, but all in a good way. We found a bridge and sat on the edge, smoking, and then moved on. We had no fishing gear, but we brought some canned food and other stuff. Before the night set it in, we pick a spot to camp in. It was a thick forested area, trees on every side of the track so you felt like you were in a tunnel. We had brought the small hammocks to sleep on but before we set them up, we decided to do a little scouting on the perimeter. Now, this is what we used to do in the old days too. We'd walk the area, go around a little and make sure some dude's house wasn't just over the hill and we're not just on their yard. We'd walk maybe a hundred feet or so into the woods, up a small incline. We figured if we didn't see anything from the top of the short hill, we'd be okay. But when we got to the top, we saw an old building down at the bottom, about a hundred yards into the woods, just barely visible. We pondered over what to do. We both assumed that it was a sugar shack or something, but there didn't appear to be a clear road into it. From where we were, there didn't look to be anyone in there either, all was quiet, no movement could be seen, no lights. We decided to walk a little closer just to make sure. We came down the hill very slowly as we neared the building, we saw it wasn't a sugar shack at all, instead an old church. It looked like it had been abandoned for years. It was a squat, 
sagging build in, and the wooden planks are almost black from years of moss and rot. A cross still stood on the top of the place, also weathered black. None of the windows had glass, and there were no doors, just open doorways. We got close enough to see inside. There were rows of pews and a build-up section in the front the preacher would stand on. We didn't go all the way in. We didn't want to. Beyond all that, there were no signs of anybody else. No footprints, no paths, no roads. It was an abandoned church. We left immediately and went back up the hill to our spot that we had picked to camp at. Having a hill between us, we felt a lot safer, but we're still on edge. We chalk it up to the natural creepiness seeing a church in the middle of the woods. Besides, at this point, it was dusk and we decided to rig up our hammocks and go to sleep and move on early morning. Night set in. As we lay in our hammocks, we start talking and we begin to hear something in the direction of the church. A conversation about it went a little like this. You hear that? What the hell? It sounds like someone's singing. And at this point, we both slid right out of our hammocks, hunkered down, starting to hear more. We listened for a minute or two, but it wasn't getting louder. Finally, we moved back up the hill to spire from where they are. We could still move very quietly in the woods from the old days. The moon was barely out, but provided enough light for us to walk there. We don't use flashlights because obviously we don't want to be seen. It's coming from the church and the singing's coming from inside. Joe and I put our heads close together and heard a conversation. It sounded like they were talking in tongues almost. The light looked to be candlelight from the way it flickers, and though we tried, we couldn't make out what was being sung exactly. It sounded like church music, but another version in another language. We sat and watched for a while, trying to see who was in there, but we only saw occasional shadows. We have no intention of getting closer either. We're about a football field length away now. The singing continued and then stopped. After that, a booming male voice began to chant. I was already freaked out, but this voice thoroughly scared the life out of me. It sounded like some Old Testament preacher you'd see in movies, but they were speaking a different language and we can't get a word of it. Eventually it got to where the male single voice would say something, then another lot would answer in song. This lasted for a while, then they all broke out into this long sustained wow that just kept getting louder and it's so disturbing. At this point, I was getting ready to say, let's get out of there. But Joe says, hey, they're coming. And we get far enough away that we couldn't really make them out well. But what we could see was a line of people seemingly coming straight towards us, still singing. We book it down the hill to our campsite grab our stuff and ran to the tracks. Once there, we ran down the tracks in the direction we come from. After a few minutes, we stopped and looked back. We saw lights coming down the hill. They were moving erratically like whoever was holding them is shaking. We continued to run in spurts and walk as fast as we can, eventually seeing the lights and the end of the road. By our map, we knew a small town was about 15 minutes down it. As we walk there, we get to a 24 hour gas station and call my wife to get us. My wife and other friends all just think it's kids messing around but we sure as hell know there weren't kids singing like that. We're not sure who those people were but it's definitely the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. When I was 19, I used to love going for early morning runs alone in the woods outside my college campus. I never saw another person on my trowel and I really enjoyed the silence in the early morning. However, one day I was feeling unwell and decided to stop about halfway in. I was relatively close to the outskirts of the woods. I knelt over and got sick. I then hear snapping and crunching behind me and turn and see a guy running right towards me in all black, seemingly out of nowhere. 
He's definitely not out for an early morning jog like me. I can't describe the feeling of dread that washed over me as he silently quickens his pace towards me. I pull myself together and ran out there as fast as possible. I ran my first and only six minute mile that day and never went to go in them woods again. This happened to my roommate and I two years ago, when we drove into the national forest just outside of the town I lived in. We go to a small college in New England, about three hours away from any major city. For context, this forest had quite a few urban legends surrounding it and the local community, although they'd go there often, having a lot of superstitions about being safe there and what you need to do. I just broke up with my partner and my roommate could sense I'm down. Finals are around the corner so she decides to help me get out of my mind and suggests we go to a few spots there that she's found and just chill and de-stress. We took a couple of beers with us and drove to this secluded spot in the forest. From the moment we left the main asphalt road into the forest, I saw a couple of things that unsettled me. You could see the abandoned houses of a ghost town from the higher ground that the road is on, and we saw this old doll hanging from a rope on a tree, creepy, but we didn't really give it a second thought and kept driving. We got to a clearing and parked our car behind some trees, popped open the back of our SUV, and started just talking, playing music. About 10 minutes into this, two cars appeared on the road and parked in the clearing. My friend doesn't pay attention to them. Instead, she keeps talking, but I was facing them from where I sat and I couldn't stop seeing what they did. A guy popped out of the car, another does too and they talk, and then I saw them take out a long object covering dark plastic bags from the back of the car. This is when I notice one of them has a gun, not like a shotgun either. They then start lighting the bag on fire. I tell my friend to get down. She turned around and saw them for the first time, black smoke rising from the bags and between them, trying to keep my head down and still glances as I saw them take out another object. I heard them shoot at it before they set it on fire. I don't know how long my friend and I were laying there in silence, but definitely long enough to let the terror sink in. At this point, I look up and saw they're pointing at our car and they start walking into the woods, maybe trying to follow our tracks or find us. All I know is that right then, I told my friend jump into the driver's seat and we gotta make a run for it. I shut the back door between that and the car starting up. The guys hear this and actually start sprinting towards us. We went over a hill and drive as far as we can to try and get safe, then into the neighbouring town and roamed around for a while, just making sure we're not being followed. That day, we tried to make fun of the whole situation and got drunk but started crying because we saw something we shouldn't have and we were in grave danger.